Good morning, everybody. It is April 13th, 2023. It is 510 in the morning. Okay, I'm going to start with chapter one, Paul. I forgot if I read this. I think I started in chapter seven. Okay. Chapter 1, may I introduce to you Saul of Tarsus. Each time we engage in a serious study <laughs> of a great life, we need to brace ourselves for surprises. Interestingly, the greater the life, the more shocking the surprises. You can count on it. The circumstances and events that led to greatness in that person it took place in the hidden years when few were looking and no one cared. That's certainly true of America's 16th and probably greatest president, Abraham Lincoln. I love him. Most would assume the office of president of the United States would be a fitting climax to an already prestigious life. After all, after all, anyone would, who becomes president surely grew up with sort of a silver spoon background. Emerging naturally into the limelight before beginning an easy slide into the role of president. Hardly. Lincoln was born in 1809 in a primitive log cabin in what then known as Hardin County, Kentucky. His father was an illiterate, wandering laborer, his mother a frail, sickly woman. They were forced out of their home when he was only seven. His poor mother died when he was nine. He had virtually no formal schooling. His first attempt at a career in business in 1831 and failed miserably. A year later, he ran for state legislator unsuccessfully. That same year, he lost his job and applied to law school, but was left out of the consideration because of his miserable qualifications. Not long after that humiliating ordeal, he started another business using money he borrowed from a close friend. Before the year closed, however, that business faded and failed. Lincoln claimed bankruptcy and spent the next 17 years paying off debt. In 1835, he fell deeply in love with Anne Rutledge, only to have his heart broken when she died soon after their engagement. The following year, he had a complete nervous breakdown and spent the next six months in bed recovering. In 1838, he sought to become Speaker of the State Legislature and was defeated. In 1840, two years later, he sought to become the Elector of the State and was defeated. Three years later, he ran for Congress and lost. In 1840. In 1846, he ran again for Congress and won. <sighs> Woo! -hoo. Only two years later, he ran for re-election and was soundly defeated. In 1849, he sought the job of land officer in his home state, but was rejected. In 1854, he ran for the Senate of the United States. Again, he lost. In 1856, he sought the vice president's blah, 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 the vice presidential nomination at his party's national convention. He got less than 100 votes, suffering yet another embarrassing defeat. In 1858, he ran for the U.S. Senate and lost again. Finally, in 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected to the presidency of the United States and soon after endured the most devastating war our country has ever experienced. His perseverance rewarded him with unprecedented political success, and he was re-elected for a second term. Sadly, 
only five days after Lee surrendered on the 14th of April, 1865, Lincoln was assassinated. He was dead before reaching 60 years of age. Not knowing any of that, we reflect on a presidency like his, and our tendency is to think, my, what a magnificent background he must have had. Then we peer deeper into the dark cave of his past and realize it's riddled with failure and tragedy, heartache and pain. We're surprised, even shocked. The steel of greatness is forged in the pit. It's true of all of us. Don't ever forget